This video shows you how to draw Bohr diagrams for ions, showing protons, neutrons, and electron arrangements. Ions are formed when neutral atoms lose or gain electrons, and end up with a positive or negative charge. Here are a few points to remember about ions. A proton is positive and an electron is negative. In a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. When atoms form ions, they do so only by losing or gaining electrons. They never change the number of protons. This would change the identity of the element. When a neutral atom loses one or more electrons, it gains a positive charge, and it's called a cation. When a neutral atom gains one or more electrons, it gains a negative charge, and it is called an anion. When atoms interact with each other, they use only the electrons in the outermost occupied shell. The outermost occupied shell is called the valence shell. Electrons in the outermost occupied shell are called valence electrons. For example, here's the Bohr model for nitrogen, element number 7. The outermost occupied shell, or valence shell, is shell number 2, as shown by the yellow circle here. And the valence electrons, the electrons in the valence shell are represented by the blue circles here. Notice that a neutral nitrogen atom has five valence electrons. Here's another example, the Bohr model for magnesium, element number 12. Its outermost occupied shell, or valence shell, is shell number 3, as shown by the yellow circle. And the two valence electrons in a magnesium atom are shown by the two blue circles in the valence shell. Here are some points to know about cation and anion formation. Elements with 1 to 3 valence electrons tend to lose these electrons and form positive ions or cations. Elements with 5 to 7 valence electrons tend to gain electrons in order to fill up their valence shells. When they gain electrons, they form negative ions or anions. Let's do a couple of examples. Here is the Bohr model for an atom of lithium. We can see that a lithium atom has one valence electron. Lithium easily loses its valence electron to form a lithium ion. The Bohr models of ions are usually written with square brackets around them like this. The three protons in a lithium ion supply a positive 3 charge, and the two remaining electrons supply a negative 2 charge. So the net charge on a lithium ion is positive 3, minus 2, which equals positive 1. The net charge of positive 1 is written here on the top right of the bracket. So here's the finished Bohr model for an Li plus ion or Li plus cation. Notice the Bohr model for an Li plus ion has the same electron arrangement as the model for a neutral atom of the noble gas helium. When elements in groups 1 to 2 and groups 13 to 17 on the periodic table form ions, they do so in order to achieve the stable electron arrangement of a noble gas. We can easily tell the difference between a lithium plus ion and a neutral helium atom, because the lithium plus ion has three protons and two electrons, whereas the neutral helium atom has two protons and two electrons. Consider the Bohr model for a neutral sulfur atom. Its valence shell is the outermost shell, colored yellow. And we see that it has six valence electrons, as shown by the small blue circles. Atoms with six valence electrons tend to gain electrons in order to fill up their valence shell. So a sulfur atom will gain two electrons. And now it has a total of 18 electrons. Two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and 8 in its valence shell, or third shell. 18 electrons supply a charge of minus 18. We see by looking in the nucleus that it has 16 protons. Any sulfur particle, whether it's an atom or an ion, will also have 16 protons. 16 protons supply a charge of positive 16. So positive 16 and negative 18 add up to a total of negative 2. So the net charge is negative 2. We draw brackets around the ion, 
and move the net charge to the top right of the brackets, like this. So this is the Bohr model for an S2- or sulfide ion. When non-metal atoms form negative ions, or anions, their name changes so that it ends in the letters IDE, so a sulfur atom becomes a sulfide ion. Notice that a sulfide ion, or a sulfide anion, has the same electron arrangement as a neutral atom of the noble gas argon. But you can easily tell the difference because the sulfide ion has 16 protons and 18 electrons, whereas a neutral argon atom has 18 protons and 18 electrons. A sulfur atom readily gains two electrons to form a sulfide ion, because a sulfide ion has the same stable electron arrangement as an atom of the noble gas argon. Atoms tend to form ions in order to achieve noble gas stability.